there because really when you think about that thing, God has a way of using those who are blessed to be a blessing. That's why you got to remember Martin Luther King Jr. He was not poor. Martin Luther King Jr. grew up in a middle income black family in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin Luther King Jr. could have, after receiving his PhD, gotten a comfortable job up north at a university, but instead he came back down south and he died organizing the poor people's campaign. He died in Memphis standing in solidarity with striking sanitation workers. All I'm trying to let you know is that when you are blessed with a position and privilege, God wants you to use your privileges for those who are underprivileged. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, I've got to go ahead and prophetically indict Dallas, Texas. I'm watched with great interest as Dallas has become, has tried to emerge as a world-class city. Look at all of the big booming projects going on as you get downtown and go further out north. We got uh, a little chicken uh, establishment that was made better, and then we had a $30 million piece of development recently on Lancaster. All of that is nice, but while you have these big booming projects, you have have the gap between the have-gots and the have-nots that's expanding. It blows my mind. Dallas is going to host, in all probability, the 2016 Republican Convention. And all I'm trying to say, Mr. Mayor, as you go recruiting the Republican Convention, don't forget that you can't have a world-class city if you've got citizens who are living in second-class conditions. As long as you've got citizens in second in class conditions in a food desert as long as you got citizens in second class conditions where there are certain stores with fresh produce that will not come to this side of town and then to make matters worse you have stores like Walmart that will pimp their workers and while pimping their workers with poverty wages they will have low prices and low prices that put businesses out of business in that community I'm trying to say you ain't no world-class city as long as you have a, a second-class community. And so with that being the case, we must recognize when God blesses you with privileges, you've got to use your privileges for the privilege of those who are underprivileged. I got to quote my mentor, Dr. Manuel Scott. Dr. Scott says when you have advantages, you use your advantages for the advancement of those who are disadvantaged. Is that not what Paul is doing. Paul is collecting and offering. Watch it for poor people. I like that because he's not demonizing poor people. He's not denouncing poor people. He's not scapegoating poor people. He's not blaming poor people for living in bad situations. Paul is in solidarity with them. Don't you love it? Because he's not trying to challenge them to beat the odds. He is trying to change their odds. I kind of like that right there because that's what justice work does. Justice says it's not enough to challenge people to beat the odds. We've got to change the odds so that there is indeed liberty and justice. Come experience. 